Hello again. Today we're going to take a look at some very simple composite photos. Basically a composite photo is where we take two images and then we blend them together in Photoshop. So I've got three examples. We're going to start with the simplest example where we've got two photos taken at the exact same focal length, just at different times. Okay, so this one here, we've got the moon rise uh, on a fairly hazy afternoon. And once the moon got a little bit higher, it was a lot clearer. So what I want to do is blend this moon in with this shot here. Okay, our second example, uh, we've got this seascape here on a pretty dull, flat, overcast day. Um, and just to liven it up a little bit, I'm going to blend this background in with this shot. So these ones are taken at different focal lengths. So this one's shot at 17 mil and this one's shot at 40 mil. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically take this horizon and blend it in with this foreground. Okay, and then our last one, again, another one shot at 17 mil. And then what we're going to do is take this yacht that was shot at 40 mil and blend those two together. Important thing with composites is try and get your images as similar as possible. Okay, so with all of these, I've shot in manual mode, the settings haven't really changed much. So having two images that are very similar to start with is where you want to start. Okay, so especially for beginners, and this is what this is aimed at beginners, people just starting out with Photoshop, just giving you some very simple ways to start just to get familiar with Photoshop, okay? And have a bit of fun at the same time, okay? So this is all about just having some fun, blending some images together um, and getting you started in Photoshop. So we'll start with the first image. So this is the easy one. So we've got two photos, exact same focal length, um, just, yeah, different composition. But what I want to do is bring this moon into this shot. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with this image because this is the moon we want. And if we just go up to our quick selection tool, which will be up here, if you can't see it, um, you can right click and you'll get these little options. And we want the quick selection tool. Once we have the quick selection tool selected, uh, square bracket keys will make it bigger or smaller. And we want it around about the size of the moon and then just click and it's going to select the moon. Okay, or select whatever you want to replace. From there, what I like to do is go up to select and mask. And you'll see this screen. Okay, now have a pause the video if you need to, but these are the settings that I like to use. So radius at two, smoothing at 10, feather at one pixel, contrast and edge shift at zero. Uh, probably the most important part here is that we do a new layer with a layer mask. Okay, and then okay. And that's going to select just our moon and feather the edges so it looks a little bit more natural. From here, if we grab our move tool, so top left move tool, we're just going to click and drag this image out of the way. And then we're going to click on our top layer and just drag it onto the top of our original exposure. So we can close this one down now because now we've got this moon and it's been perfectly masked out. And because it's the same focal length, technically that should just fit directly over the top of our original moon, okay? And to make the blend a little bit more natural, a bit more realistic, we're just going to zoom in, okay? And we'll make sure that we have got the moon directly over the top. That's pretty close, okay? If anything, we could probably just move it this way a little bit. Okay, so nice easy blend, uh, same focal length, so everything should line up fairly well. And from there, personally, I would just take our opacity down a little bit, just to make it look a little bit more natural. Okay, if we take it all the way down, we won't see it. And then we're just going to bring that moon back in until we start to get some detail. Now, you'll notice in the original image, the bottom of the moon is kind of fading into the horizon. So another option we can do is if we just bring our opacity all the way up, and because we've got a layer mask, if we grab a black brush, so make sure this little uh, selection is on black, grab our brush tool. If we turn the opacity down to around about 20%, and then what we can do is just start to, on this layer mask, 
just start to paint out the bottom half of that moon with a few brush strokes. So now starting to look a bit more like the original. Okay, so it's starting to fade off into the background. Um, and again, we can just sort of take our opacity down. Okay, so that's a that's the easiest way to to do a blend of two images. Okay, so a composite image. So taking two images, placing them together. Nice easy one to start with. So now we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so on to example number two. So this example, we've got two photos taken at different focal lengths. Okay, so this is the image of our seascape. And again, a flat overcast day, not the most epic shot of all time, but a good example of how we can just kind of bring in some more of this detail in the background. So this was taken up on the Sunshine Coast. And I just want to bring in some more of this horizon line so it's not quite so small. So what I've done, I've taken another shot at 40 mil, and this time I've just got as much of the sky as I can and more of the horizon. So now we're starting to see those buildings. We're starting to see the mountains in the background. So what I'm going to do is now do another composite of this image and this image. So this is the next step, okay? So this one isn't quite as simple as the first one, um, but still very simple, okay? So we're going to, similar to what we did before, but no masking this time. All we're going to do is grab our move tool. We're going to click and drag this image and then again, click and drag and place it on top. Okay, now we can close down our first one. Now the trick here is to line up our horizon. So the easiest way for us to see where our horizon is, if we just turn the opacity of that top layer down to around about 50%, then we can kind of see through the top layer. And all I'm going to do, just using my arrow keys, I'm just going to bring this down until my horizon is roughly lined up. So around about there looks pretty good. Now we can turn our opacity back up to 100%. And then what we're going to do with this top layer selected, we're going to grab a layer mask and we're just going to black out the bits that we don't want. Okay, so with that mask selected, and a black brush will turn our opacity up to 100%. Okay, make our brush fairly big to start with and we're just going to black out all the bits that we don't want. And as we get closer to the horizon, I'm just gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and smaller and then eventually we're just going to see the top half. Okay, and another cool little tip is if you just hold your mouse over to one side and click and then hold it to the other side, hold the shift button or the shift key and then click on the other side. It'll do a nice straight line for you. Okay, and then to tidy it up, if we just zoom in, okay, and again with our black brush, we're just going to sort of black out the bits that we don't want. And if we go too far, we can just change back to a white brush and start to paint back in. Okay, and just get our horizon nice and straight and get everything that we want. Okay, so as you can see, that blend is pretty perfect. Okay, and again, having two exposures that are very similar does help this process. Okay, you can kind of see a little bit here, it's gone a bit out. So just by using our black and white brushes, okay, um, and a nice soft blend will make it look a little bit better. So just alternating between black and white brushes, we can either paint in or paint out and get it sort of where it's starting to blend together. So now we've gone from that to that. So we've just brought in a bit more of that background, just made the photo look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so that's it for example number two. Again, nice and easy and a good idea, especially if you're working with a zoom lens and you wanna capture everything. Okay, so we're on the Sunshine Coast. Again, not the most epic day, not the most epic photo, but more of an example just to show you what we can do the wide angle to capture all that movement in the water and then just zoom in and then capture your background as well. Okay, so rather than having this image here where sort of nothing's really happening in the background, okay, we wanna show off all those, the high rises and the mountain ranges. Okay, and that, that's another composite. So two photos blending them together. Okay, now onto our last example. Now this one is a bit more specific, okay? So this one is more designed for an astro type Milky Way shot. 
So the blending process will still work with other images, but this one, I'm going to show you how we can kind of blend these two together where we've got our 17 mil shot with the Milky Way. And then we've got a 40 mil shot with just the yacht. Okay, so this one is very much specific to astrophotography or Milky Way nighttime shots because we've got a lot of detail in these stars. And what we want to try and do, if we were to just click and drag, nothing's going to line up, okay? So this one, a little bit more in depth, bear with me, I'll still make it very simple and very effective. So similar to what we did before, we're going to start with our move tool. We're going to grab our picture of the yacht. We want that one on top. So we're just going to click and drag. Um, if we hold the shift key and then click and drag, it's just going to place it directly over the top of our other image. Okay, so we've got them stacked on top of each other. Now the reason this one's a little bit different because if we just black out this sky to reveal what's underneath, the stars aren't going to line up. It's all going to be out of whack. Things aren't going to look very natural. So what we're going to do is, for starters, we're going to create a layer mask. And with our white mask selected, we're going to grab our gradient tool, which is over here. We're going to make sure our gradient is on black and white. So if we just click this little down arrow and it's under the basic tab. So basic tab, select black and white. That's going to give us a black and white gradient. Now by default, you're probably going to be on the normal gradient tool, which that's fine. What we do is if we just, because we're going from black to white, what we're going to do is we want to black out this sky and then slowly start to bring in what's underneath. So with this layer mask selected, grab your gradient tool, click and drag, and you'll see it start to black out. And then if we hold the shift key, we can sort of, we can make that nice and straight. Okay, so in this case, what we want to do is we do want to get that gradient as close to the horizon as well, to the top of the mast as possible. Okay, now this tool is a little bit fiddly. If you find that's a bit fiddly, go to your classic gradient and then you simply hold shift and bring it down and it'll give you a nice straight line. Okay, so I do prefer the classic gradient. I can hold my shift key and I know if I sort of start to go off to the side, it's still going to draw a dead straight line. Okay, so somewhere around about there. So as you can see, this one isn't a very nice blend. Okay, uh, we've got two very different images. We've got one at 40 mil, we've got one at 17 mil. Um, I might have even given this one a little bit of a denoise treatment. So they don't, they don't blend together well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make them blend together well. So first thing we need to do is with this top layer selected, we're going to press Control and J. That's going to make a copy of that top layer. For starters, we're going to hide that layer. We'll, we'll get back to that soon. But what we want to do is click on this second layer Okay, so this is the one of just the yacht. There's our, there's our background. Okay, so here's the one of just the yacht. And essentially we just want sort of the yacht and the horizon in. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our blend type. So in here, blend type, and we're going to change it to lighten. And what that's going to do is reveal all of the lighter parts of the image. Okay, so as you can see, there's our original 40 mil and there's our lightened 40 mil. Okay, so it's kind of, it's brought in a little bit of the original images, which is what we don't want. But more importantly, we can now see those stars. Okay, so rather than seeing those stars shot at 40 mil, we're now seeing the stars from the original image. So now what we want to do is if we now click the eyeball in our top image, what we can do is just with this layer mask selected, we can grab a black brush tool Make sure our opacity is at 100%. Okay, and then we can just start to paint out those stars manually. And now, look at that. Okay, so now we're not revealing the bottom part. And that's why we do the second layer, because the second layer is still the, the darker image. But now we're just selecting the parts we want. So if we go too far, then we start to see what's underneath. So switch back to your white key. Okay, and a nice soft brush and you'll get a, a better blend. So if you want to zoom out, get a nice big brush, okay, and the blend will just be a little bit nicer. Okay, and then finally you can go and tidy it up because you are going to see some of those original stars. 
Okay, so you've got some of these stars that are a little bit bigger. You can go in and tidy, and if you want to, just on this layer mask with a black brush, you can literally black out all of those bigger stars. So then you're only seeing the original stars from that bottom exposure. Hopefully that made sense. So that, that's how we do it. Okay, so that's how we go from having this shot. Okay, so we, we blend in the yacht first with a lightened layer. Okay, and then we use our normal layer to bring back those stars. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Just slow it down. If you need to have a look at it, slow it down, have a look. Like I said, that sort of a blend is more specific to a Milky Way type shot. Okay, because I know I have had a few people ask how I did this shot. That's how I did it. Okay, so two shots, one of the Milky Way, one of the yacht, and then we blend them together. Okay, just makes a nicer image. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you did find it useful. If you did, please leave a like. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Hopefully a lot more live streams coming up soon. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.